Hello, hi. Hello, I'm Alice. And my name is Tsiang, and we are a couple that have been dating for about seven, eight months. And yeah, we are currently uh, booking a trip now to with significant authors to Korea and specifically in Seoul. And yeah, we just want to give you some information, a little bit of information about the different things to expect in Korea during the trip. Yeah, so maybe you want to start off with introducing Korea to everyone here. Okay, sure. So basically what we've heard about Korea from significant authors is because since we're basically going in July, the brief summer period is during that period of time because it lasts from July to August and it's the hottest time of the year in South Korea actually. Mm. So these temperatures we may be facing during the trip itself will range between 23 to 30 degrees Celsius. So it's also the weather time of the year because it's also the monsoon season where it will rain down on half the countries and, and bring like for the annual rainfall basically mm. for during this month itself. Okay, so that will be the weather that we'll be experiencing especially when you're traveling about July and August. And yeah, let's just move on to what Korea has to entail for everyone. Korea is known for their food, their nature, their culture. And there are lots of areas around Korea where we can eat, have fun, basically just explore the, the whole country uh, together. And actually significant authors have provided us with like a PDF and there's a whole list of activities we can do as well as the different places we can go on top of the nice foods around the area that we're staying at. So before we even go for the trip, we already have the itinerary planned for us every single day and it looks very very full. Cool. So yeah. I, think, I think we are going to be spending a lot more time together and really just have fun throughout the whole day and I don't think we'll get bored at all. I don't think so either because I really saw a lot of activities yeah. in the itinerary that you provided us. Yeah, so I think we'll definitely have fun. Before we even go for the trip, we already know what we're going to do. And yeah, th these are the things that we don't have to worry about when, when we are working with significant others. And now let's move on to some of the things that you guys can bring if you are going to Korea, especially during the July period. Okay, yeah. So maybe I can start off with saying that there's you should probably bring thick clothing like sweaters or windbreakers because of how it will be raining and then it may be a chilly weather even though it may want to be hot one of the hotter periods but it's still one of the colder weathers in Korea itself. So it will it's preferred to wear dark clothing per se because of how it will be more translucent if you wear light coloured clothing. And also flowy dresses are a no no because your clothes will blow upwards from the strong winds from the monsoon season. And also, observable fabric for clothing such as cotton and jeans will not be good because it will make your clothes stink for days. Mm. Alright, so maybe other than that, you would want to bring an umbrella or poncho because it might rain quite a bit. And of course, if you want to wear sandals or uh, maybe even shoes, try to buy some slip-proof ones so that you won't, of course, sleep in Korea. <laughs> I don't think you want to enjoy yourself over there. Yeah, Yeah. so true. other than that, that will be all the, all the information that we have for now. Uh, we will see you guys in Korea with a vlog. So, yeah. So, yeah. let's go! See you guys! Alright, so uh, we're currently in Seoul and what we're doing is we like, got, got a bit of food here and uh, we got some of the Korean friends who are behind the camera for us. Uh, if you want to say hi, you can say hi. Hi. Yeah. Very nice. So, uh, we're doing a little bit of tea snacks. So, we got uh, ramen here. That's for me. It's a non spicy ramen for me because I'm kind of lightweight. So, non spicy ramen. Yeah. And, and for the spicy lovers, I have over here the spicy bean soba. So, I don't really think there's meat inside. So, this is really good for vegetarian lovers with a side of anchovies as well. Yeah, very nice. And the last one for the current friend here, I'm going to have a is, uh, if I'm not wrong, it is just here. Yes. yes. Right. Like a so, we also got a hook side to share with us, and it's potato or kitchen and cake. Without the kitchen. Yeah, so, this is also for non-sized people. Okay, so this is what we have here. Let's do a little bit of okay, the case, right? Yeah. Okay. My non-spicy ramen. <laughs> It looks a little bit like Singaporean ramen. Yeah, it looks a bit like maybe I would say. But there's a little more ingredients that make it more Korean. See, the cheese smells good. Oh. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay, there you go. Is this a normal Korean ramen? It, it tastes quite authentic. I think the soup is a little bit more rich than the Singapore ones. But I think it's not bad overall. Okay, let's see. Maybe I can try my one. Because this actually looks more unique compared to other Korean dishes I've seen before. So, it's actually quite special. Yeah, it's quite special. I've never seen this in Singapore before. Yeah, so there is kimchi and cocktail cucumber and cardboard egg. Um, like seafood. So let's try a little bit of it. It's like not very spicy, a little bit on the sweet side. And then you can actually taste a little bit of the crunch from the lettuce and the cucumber, which I would say is really not bad. So I would rate it as 8 out of 10. I'll give it a rating. Um, I'll rate this like a 7. I think it's not, it's genuinely not bad. Okay, yeah. Next, okay. we'll try some of the, we'll steal some of the, the noodle from. Let's go find us, friend. <laughs> Okay, compared to my soba in this, it's a bit colder side. It is warmer. I would say the glass noodles is actually really good. You can, it's chewier, and then it just really tastes very homely. I would say. So that's what I would rate nine out of ten. I regret not buying this. This is actually very nice. I think, I think it's a nine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Then maybe let's try the pancake. Right? Yeah, you can go ahead. The potato pancake. It's actually tried. They didn't have potatoes. Oh. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, because originally we wanted to have the potato ones, but it's sold out. So that's very unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm definitely gonna try that. Later. Hi guys. Hi. Now, now we are at uh, Jeju Island, and wow, the weather here is really nice. Yeah. Freaking amazing. In Singapore, it's so freaking hot, but with my jacket on, it's really very amazing to feel right now. Not sweating at all. The, actually, actually, the weather here is like, I think 16, 17 degrees average. I would say it's around there. Yeah, so it's actually not bad. Yeah. And yeah, uh, we have some of the information written down here about Jeju Island. So I guess we can talk about it. And maybe if you guys are interested, you can come along next time. And yeah, uh, Jeju Island is known for the beautiful landscape scenery and a lot of outdoor activities that people do here, like paragliding even and flying kites. And yes, they do it on these boats over here sometimes. Hmm. Yes. Very pretty and yeah, it's really amazing. Everyone here is so friendly. Yeah, for real. Like hotels are really very cheap over here. So we, we are here for, I would say, around five days. Yeah, about say. five days. And it will be really cheap, especially during the June to September period. So do take advantage of that when you're visiting here because those are the non-peak seasons in Korea because more people will go in December when it's more of the holiday season, especially for Christmas. Mm. Yeah, so the island itself is actually connected uh, via, I think, mid air and sea. And we came here through the boats. So there's actually a boat right behind us and we're just walking around and looking at the different places around here that we can visit. And yeah, the boat here, if you don't have motion sickness, it's good. But if you do, please prepare a paper bag with you or a plastic bag. Or those so, motion sickness medicines as well. Yeah, <laughs> it, it might get a little bit bumpy, but yeah, for, for us, it was quite okay. Yeah, I would say the waves are not very strong, so the motion sickness will be very bad, I would say. Mm. And yeah, getting around here is actually quite easy. Uh, we actually bought bus tickets, but we're just walking around here and just, uh, yeah, just, just let you see what are some of the... Yeah. The, the attractions and buses are actually the cheapest way to get around here and there are other other services like taxis you can even rent like cars motorbikes bicycles if you want yeah so navigating around here is actually very, very pretty nice and quite easy yeah like for bicycles there's really a lot of long pathways for you to go without like, any abruptions and any disruptions over here because 
this, like I said, when we're traveling like, in July actually, so mm. it's really non-peak season. So do travel. It's nice. very cheap right now. Yeah, <laughs> around the July to to September period is actually really very very cheap. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's about it. I think if we see anything else that is interesting, we will uh, definitely film again and cut through the next video. We'll see you guys. Yes, we'll see you guys in our next activity. Bye. Hi, say hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Jeju. Yes. Yeah, very nice. So maybe we can ask a couple of questions to our Korean friends over here so we can know more about the language itself and more about the culture. So among everything you visit in Korea, which is your favorite place in general? Uh, I like to go to Nangsam Tower to look at all the love blocks. Oh, do you have anyone in your life right now? Sadly, no. no. <laughs> what about you? Mine, I love to go to Dongdaemun because they have so many shopping outlets for us. To look at all the different clothes by different vendors and it has like really rich local life and local culture so you guys should really come and visit wow oh, that's that's how about the food do you guys recommend any food from those places um i recommend street food maybe like tteokbokki and omu and yeah the korean fish cake that's the best you all have to get it if you ever come to korea yeah. and if you can drink you should definitely try the makgeolli Mm. Hmm, what is makgeolli? It's actually a uh, Korean rice wine. Yeah, and it tastes really good. Wow! Since both of us really love our alcohol, we will be excited to try it. Wine, wine is my favorite. Yeah, why not, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right. So, uh, I think we'll just be walking around Jeju a, a, a bit more, and hopefully, you guys can join us. For, for, for dinner later on. Yeah, and yeah. maybe we're coming. I think we're going for a picnic right now. So, shall we go for it? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Alright, we'll cut through the picnic in 3, 2, 1, go. Hi guys, welcome back. So, now we're for a picnic place for a sit down. So, now we'll. Quite a little food here. Yeah, and so, yeah. Let's sit down and we'll talk to you more about our snacks along with different activities we can do in Korea as well. So, let's go. Yeah, as you can see, the view here is absolutely amazing. amazing. I mean, although this place is cooling, we found a place under the shade itself, so it will make it really more cooling and more of the atmospheric feeling you will feel in Korea itself. Yeah. So in our picnic here, we really had a standard snacks because we were really full from lunch. So now we have water, of course, and yogurt, and also famous snacks here called Kaguro. Yeah, it's actually from Lotte, and uh, this, if you guys know, there's a very famous uh, pub in it's called Lotte World. Yes. It's actually owned by them, so they actually produce these kind of uh, snacks as well. So it's very interesting. Yes. Just found out about it when you bought it. Yeah. And also, of course, the classic packets, drink juice packets that we can drink. Yeah, it's actually quite, it's not bad, 200 ml, and it's quite cheap. Yeah. This is like a Capri Sun if you've heard of these type of juice pouches yeah. before. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, we see quite a lot of families here um, flying kites everywhere. And, yeah. Yeah, so for activities wise, people will usually hike around this area because there's really quite a lot of greenery for them to really surround themselves in. And if they want to, they also play card games like Uno. I brought it myself because in this weather, you can really play and enjoy any type of activity you want, be it sitting down entertainment or walking entertainment in the outdoors because of how scenic views, how many scenic views. Yeah, We're bringing Singaporean cultures into, into Korea as well. I think I don't think the Korean friend behind us know what Uno is. It's okay, so maybe we will just play a bit of Uno and bring them along with us for the picnic as well because yeah. we want to introduce different types of cultures that we face here as well because we want, since they're sharing more about our culture, their culture, we want to share more about our culture to them as well. Alright, uh, people also do a lot of snorkeling and kayaking around here. And I don't think I see a lot of kayaks today, but yeah, more or less, I think people actually kayak around here. It's actually quite, 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 quite pretty and beautiful. Yes, and if you look over there, there's actually someone fishing right now. Oh, oh, actually, oh my god. Yeah. I, I, I'm wondering how many people probably got all those big fishes. Oh my god. It's a small bucket. All right. Anyway, uh, there's a Jeju Canola Flower Festival, which unfortunately. We're here in July, but it's held around April. Uh, it's actually a blossom of canola flowers, which uh, I don't think there is here. I think they're all gone, but they are bright yellow flowers. And it actually, the blossoming of those flowers actually marks the springtime in Korea. 
So now it's around like the end of springtime, transitioning into the, the other season, the next season. So the weather is really, really nice. And yeah, I think we're just going to have a fun time here with our Korean friends. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time at the uh, dinner. So, so now we're in Pizamaro, which is a kind of Western Asian fusion with Korean because we're already feeling homesick in Singapore and we want a little bit of Western food in our blood while experiencing a little bit of the Korean side of how they put Western food in Korea itself. So with that, shall we start with the pizza? Yeah, alright, let's introduce some of the things that we've ordered help. So number one. I just got a creamy pasta, very basic, but it's really different from the normal carbonara we see in Singapore because this one has chopped up lettuce inside, I would say. Okay, I'm not really sure about the difference, but yeah, it looks quite similar, I would say. So over here you see a very nice seafood pasta. Uh, also very different, I think the bowl is completely different. It's a little bit lighter as well. And yeah, it, it feels really nice. It smells very nice. Definitely. It really does. Yeah, and then, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really digging. And we also ordered, of course, the iconic Korean fried chicken. And over here is a 20 piece boneless fried chicken. So, it's I, think. It, I apologize. It's 12 piece, so we have 660. And, that's correct. And yeah. if I'm not wrong, it's, the flavor is spicy, spicy garlic, and it's boneless. So, it'll be easy for us to eat, I guess. Well, because usually in Korea, when they eat fried chicken, they usually provide plastic gloves for when they eat because of how messy it will get. But I think it's really good for us without many plastic gloves. Yeah. Okay. So let's mix, 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 and let's go! You guys are first. So, this test over here, uh, abunara pasta. I think cream, cream white. Yeah, they call it creamy pasta. So, like, off the bat, there's spinach, cabbage, mushrooms, and picnic pan. So, you can start mixing yours too. Oh, the cream looks really nice. Yeah, it looks really creamy. Like, below there's still more cream, even though I already started mixing. So, I, I'm really excited to have a little bit of this. Is it nice? Is it not bad? Okay. How would you compare it to normal Singapore pasta? Okay, so... It's a fusion of both, 
and they just really pissed me and Lucy as well. Yeah. They really brings out the flavor of the chicken. And it's very, very different compared to Singapore fried chicken. That I can say. I agree. Like, I'm not sure if you could hear the crunch from the video, but from outside it's really loud. And I'm not sure if they the sauce because I can't hear it. For me, for no preference, I prefer a lot of sauce. I think it's weird. I mean, I'm not really used to the honey chicken. How about you? I would prefer the sauce. Maybe the sauce is a lot better. Really? Yeah, I think. I think we'll get to eating. We'll see you guys in our show when we get back to Singapore. Well, the chicken is pretty. Bye! Alright, wow! Hi guys! We just dropped down in Singapore from Korea from our trip and oh, it was... Amazing! Amazing! Alright, so we're, we have basically just a conclusion of the video telling you how our trip is about and yeah, I mean, you guys definitely saw our experience. It was very, very fun. And yeah, let me just talk about some of the things that we have experienced. And it was unforgettable. Definitely. It, it really was, was. It was amazing. And uh, meeting all the friends that we have made in Korea, meeting all the Korean friends, I think I, was, I, I still have some of their contacts. And yeah, it was just such an amazing experience. Like, we, we get to experience a lot of their culture, yeah, eat really? a lot of their amazing food. It was amazing, it was great. They really told us a lot about their culture itself and I'm really get glad that we learned more about the food because it's something that I'll remember and miss when we're in Singapore because we don't really have much of the variety and more authenticity in Singapore itself. We're definitely going back. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Alright, but uh, anyway, the significant authors that basically the company that we have worked with actually provided us that the like we said the PDF that they have provided us right is actually super helpful. You get to experience and know what are the different things that you can do when you're in Korea itself. And I don't think any of us got very very bored. Like not at all. Not there at was all, yeah. no boring. Because at there all. were so many things that we could do, right? Like we could just go anywhere we want and we know where it is and where we want to go because of the whole list. And it was just very very fruitful. It was it was it was a trip that I would never forget, genuinely. Yeah, it was really so accommodating and fun because of how they they, they basically we told significant authors what our needs were and they really provided us in every aspect possible. So our expectations were like this and our reality went so much higher than expected. Yeah, definitely. I think we will definitely be uh I think patronizing significant authors again Definitely. when we are going to another country, maybe even Korea again, <laughs> because it's really amazing. And yeah, I think that that is about it. Yeah. And hopefully, you guys have enjoyed our short vlog, especially the one in Korea, which is, I mean, the country that we went to. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Um, if we are back here again, we'll see you on next trip, guys. Yeah. If you enjoyed the content, also thumbs up. Okay, comment down below where you want significant authors to go to next. See right. you, bye-bye!